Hello most of the peeps, this is the Geek Artist back again with another video and this is going to be a casual session where I'll be talking about the importance of studying lighting of objects to understand how light and shadow operates on different shapes and forms. In the meantime, I'll be studying or recreating the lighting from a reference and talk about my general workflow. So here's a reference image that I have taken on the top corner and what I'll basically be doing is I'll be looking at it and try to recreate this on my canvas which I have open. So the general process of studying anything be it life study or any environment or full scenes or objects is to observe it, try to understand it and then create it by looking at it. But since it's a digital software, it's very easy to get carried away and trace things or maybe pick colors or values directly from your reference and then paint it. Do not do that. That is not recommended. Then that completely defeats the purpose. The more you look at things and study and try to color things or try to sketch things from scratch using your guess, using your artistic sense of colors and values, the better you get at perceiving values and colors and so on. So and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to look at that and we're going to uh, pick colors from the color palette directly and not from the reference. We're going to guess things and just try to recreate it as accurately as possible. So I'll start with a new layer and I'll try to draw everything on new layers so that it's very easy for me to go back and forth between the layers and make adjustments, decrease or increase opacity or make some levels changes. Basically anything to match it with the reference. This is one kind of uh, studying where I'll try to create a very clean and realistic rendering. Of course, there are other methods of studying where you might want to limit yourself to a certain time frame, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes, and you will have to finish your studying within that time period. And for that method, I mean, it might be difficult to draw everything on separate layers. So. You can just take the risk, dare yourself to draw everything on the same layer because anyway, you, you'll not have enough time to plan everything properly and draw everything on separate layers. So if you want to take that approach and draw everything on one layer and limit yourself to a very small time frame, go ahead. That's a great exercise. It's not only going to help you develop your sense of colors and values, it's also going to make you not rely so much on the advantages of digital mediums such as layer separations and the undo button. Also, you're gonna massively develop your speed. Speed is very essential and master studies like that in limited time frames can really help you improve your skills. So first of all, I'll fill the background with a light gray color and then using the polygonal lasso tool, I'll try to first uh, select the top surface of the cube. I'll start with the box or the cube. And what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to block out all the shapes, the upper surface, the front surface, and the uh, right surface. All these surfaces I'm going to block out in different layers and then paint the values in them or the gradients which you can see. I know this is not accurate, this is 100% matching with the reference, but it's close and that's enough. Now again in a different layer, I'm selecting the front surface. So you see on the top left corner there are four options for selection for any kind of selection tool so always have the second option selected that is like additive selection no matter how many selections you make how many separate selections you make they all get added you know you don't lose your previous selection okay so i have the full shape done i'm gonna fill it with a lighter gray so the shortcut for that what i'm using is alt backspace it fills a selected area with the foreground color now again, I'll take a new layer below that and I'll try to uh, block out or select the right side surface of the box. If I want to get a horizontally or vertically straight line, I'll hold down shift on my keyboard as I move my mouse cursor that way I get a very straight line. All right, so I just fill that with a darker gray and I more or less have the basic volume. So what I'll do now is I'll take new layers on top of each surface such as the upper surface and I'll clip it onto that layer and any kind of painting that I want to do I'll be doing on that new layer that is clipped onto the base layer so that everything that I draw stays down within the base surface nothing bleeds out and we get a very clean render 
I'll take the soft default soft round brush with a low opacity and the pressure option saw. I'll take a relatively large brush size and a brighter gray and paint that gradient. I'll come to the front surface again follow the same steps take a new layer clip it onto it and focus on the rendering. So if you observe the reference there is a nice gradient from below. It starts bright from below and as it goes up it gets dark that's because of the light being reflected from the ground. Some might call it bounce light. Now moving to the right side surface it is quite dark exact opposite side of the light source so it receives the minimum amount of light as you can see from the reference. So let's try to get that really nice dark contrast and again as it goes down you can see a bit of a brightness or the shadow values from becoming lighter as because of light being reflected back up from the ground. So what I'm drawing now is kind of like the reflection of the shadow. The shadow is something we're gonna draw later but yeah let's try to study that dark reflection for now. Great so now I'll take a new layer below all of that and I'll again go back to the polygon lasso tool and try to select the shape of the shadow as seen in the reference and if I feel something's off then I can again hold on alt on my keyboard and that will switch the selection from plus to minus which means it's in the subtraction mode so everything you select while holding down alt on your keyboard it's going to be cutting it out or chopping it out of the selection so that's what I did. I tried to refine the selection a bit more by chopping out a certain part from the top from the back. And yeah, I'm happy with the selected area. And I'm, now I'm gonna fill that with a dark gray, match with the value of the shadow in the reference. If you look at the reference, you'll see that the shadow, as it goes behind the box, it gets a little lighter. Why does that happen? That happens because of the light that is bounced back up from the ground to the box's back side surface that light again gets bounced back all the way down to the ground and when that falls in the shadow area it creates a nice fill light so again there's a whole lot of reflection going on light being bounced from one surface to the other and again getting bounced back down so i'll quickly select that area again and paint that soft light gray to create that reflected light and then I'll take the smudge tool and with a relatively low strength, I'll smudge that area because I don't want that sharp line. I want it to be slightly blurry. Ooh. Now I'll add some blur using the smudge tool on the extreme edge of the shadow. It's not something that's visibly there in the reference, but it does happen. As the shadow gets further and further away from its source, it tends to get a bit blurry given that the light source is moderate. It's not extremely strong, such as the sun. So why should we study lighting of such basic shapes? It's very essential for developing your skills, understanding of how light works. If you want to be able to draw complex scenes, such as an entire room or huge environments or even characters, vehicles or any kind of complex shape or scene, your understanding of lighting has to be very, very, very clear. And the best way to do that is by studying simple objects. That's a great place to start. Simple objects like this. How does light, light react on a cube? or a cylinder or a spear because at the end of the day no matter how many complex objects you draw there are going to be some sort of combination mix and match of these basic shapes so if your understanding of lighting of these shapes is crystal clear it will get a lot easier for you to render paint those complex forms now coming to the spear i used the elliptical murky tool and i held down Alt and Shift on my keyboard not only to get a uniform circle which can be done by holding on Shift only but also Alt so that it originates from the center and it spreads out as I pull the cursor out so you get a nice circle that roughly matches with the shape and position that you see on the reference. So just like before I'll take a new layer on top and right click set it to clipping mask and then proceed to the rendering. Now if you want to see how to render a sphere or how to light it in a realistic way, I have made a completely separate video where I go into a lot of detail about how to do that, uh, the different modes of lighting such as harsh light or overcast lighting 
and how light works in all these different settings and I'll recommend that you should watch that video to really understand that as it's really essential for understanding lighting of much more complex shapes and forms because that is the absolute basic and the fundamental and you should really be on top of that. So what I'm doing now is I'm rendering something that's called a Terminator and if you want to know more about it, go and watch that video. Link is up on the top right corner. So this is the bounce light or reflected light that is being bounced back up or reflected back up from the ground. And there you have the occlusion shadow from below. Next I'll again use the elliptical murky tool to select the shape of the circle and I'll try to move it around with the arrow keys or for more convenience you can just right click on the shape and select transform selection that way I can freely click on it and move it around and transform it in whichever form I want. It's a lot more convenient that way. So once I'm happy with it, once I feel like the shape and position of the shadow is matching with that of the reference, I can just you know, pick the darkest value from my scene and fill it gradually. So one thing I'm going to do is make sure that the point of contact, the point where the sphere is touching the ground is the darkest because that is the occlusion, the occlusion shadow or contact shadow. That is the area where the least amount of light reaches, so it will be the darkest. And as the shadow spreads out, it's going to get a little lighter because a lot of light from the environment is going to come and try to fill that spot. And next I'll again take the smudge tool to smudge the end of the shadow on the right side to give it a bit of blur. And I'll add a little more darkness to the spear's bottom to make the occlusion a little darker so that it kind of blends in with the darkest value of the cast shadow. Now to add some final touch and for better presentation, I'll go all the way down, take a new layer above the base color and I'll pick white and use the default soft front brush with large size to paint some bright light on the ground or on the base surface. That'll give the impression that a really strong light is hitting the surface which is resulting in all that reflected light being bounced around from below. So that's it, that was my study of this scene or this reference. So. This is just a start. If you want, you can go ahead and render the cylinder and you can, you can go for more complex forms, sculptures, environments, buildings, architecture. There's a lot of complex shapes out there, a lot of different lightings to study. And the more you do that, the better you get. So that was it. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, hit the like button, subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notifications about my upcoming videos. So that's all for now. See you on the next one. Peace.